Well, hello guys. Thank you for joining me. You know, I find myself wanting to cut square holes in wood. I have a little bit of a project coming up that I've wanted to do for years now, and I think I want to bring you along. It's just going to be for fun, but I want to cut mortises in wood and do it somewhat accurately. Now, you could do the old, you know, drill out a series of holes and then true them up with a chisel, but I don't know. For some reason, I just felt felt like having a mortise bit thing. So um, I decided to go the cheap route and modify my drill press to do it. So that's going to be the first step in this project: is making it possible to do that. So come along. I'll show you what I did. Now you know you can find these already pre-built for hundred, two hundred dollars anywhere online. But, you know, true to form, we're going to spend money on parts and way too much time and labor, and maybe we can just squeak by right under that amount of money. So, come on and let's figure out what we're doing here. So this here is going to be our workhorse, our test subject. It is an OIT, Omaha Industrial Tool, a very old, early... Taiwan import drill press I got for free from a family member basically um, personally I'd rather just call it the OI or OI you know but nevertheless it's one of those things that I have a lot of around here an old tool that really needs to be cleaned up and uh, probably repainted but we're gonna ignore all that for now what's most important what I wanted to show you is that if you're doing this kind of project for a mortising jig um, what really matters is your your slop and your little your gantry here, whatever you want to call it. This one is actually surprisingly tight, so that's a very good thing. If you have a, a cheap Chinese drill press or something, and this is really loose, well, that's just gonna that's just gonna be exaggerated down below where you're actually doing your work. So something to think about. But I'm guessing if you're watching this you're not really doing a whole lot of production work or a whole lot of mortising you just want you want something to start with or just to get a project done which is what I'm doing now let's take a quick look at all the parts that I believe I will need um, first of all the star of the show is the mortising bit this is from Harbor Freight again I'm not I'm not too worried about quality at this point um, just want to get one particular project done uh, so I know there's many, many other um, options out there that are made probably from better steel. But this was like 15 bucks. Harbor Freight. Don't know why they stock it. I don't believe they have a mortising tool. Um, but whatever. It has a three-quarter shank on the actual chisel. And then this is a half-inch bit. Now the gantry on my particular drill press is an inch and three-quarters. So I have an inch and three-quarter exhaust clamp, muffler clamp. It's an exhaust mate, obviously Australian. I went to Lowe's on the same trip as I got this and uh, picked up a one inch long spacer. It is three quarters inside diameter so that goes right in there nice and snug. And then at Lowe's as well I got these quarter by twenty by half inch long socket head screws Chem four in a pack is the only reason I bought four. Only need one. Then some rusty old angle iron. Looks like three quarter. Yep. Three quarter by eighth inch. Certainly is. Now I think all told I spent probably 16, 18 bucks. I already of course had a couple of items. I think you'd easily get away with $20 or so, especially if you have some scrap iron laying around that you think is suitable. Now I think from here on out, I'm just going to do the work. I don't think I need to tell you what's going on. It's all self-explanatory. So let's just do this thing.
Alrighty, I want to break in on our productivity here a moment. Um, just to show you, I've made a, uh, close enough to symmetrical pair of arms or braces, side, side frames, I don't know what you want to call them, um, but close enough to suit our needs. It's going to work fine. Apparently, bending angle 90 degrees um, is just too much for this stuff, even with heat. Stretches it too far, so I, I just filled in where it split with weld and ground it down. That'll work just fine. Once again, you can make this just out of whatever you want. Now to be sure I'm getting this right, I'm going to weld it, spot weld it on the drill press. For my purposes, I don't know that it matters much on a direct, you know, plug in, I'm just unplug it. Um, if you have a, whatchamacallit, a VSC, variable speed controller or something like that, I don't know. One of those digital things that you can adjust the speed on instead of the belts. You might want to unhook it if you do this. Um, you know, my, my heart's in technology 80 years old, really. So, anyway, we're going to spot weld on here. Now you may ask, why orange? Well, that's simple. Because it's precious. <laughs> anyway, that's pretty much it, and we're going to try it here in a second. Um, but you can honestly make this as complicated or as simple as you want to do it. You know, get out the CNC whatevers and go for it. Um, in, in coming up with ideas and what I wanted to do, I even came across a video of a guy that that just made a framework out of scrap lumber, you know, and screwed it all together and it worked for him. So, that is pretty much it. I think we need to fire it up. Okay, my speed is set at the second lowest setting, 450 RPMs. You know, we're just, we're just horsing around here, so. We're just gonna try it out.
Now this has nothing to do with what we just built. Um, that seemed to perform admirably. I saw no, no flexing, no movement at the muffler clamp, which is kind of the weak link I thought maybe would tend to scoot up on the gantry there, you know, and not hold it strong enough. But that seemed to be okay. I'm just getting this, this chisel is really sticking inside the wood. Which probably isn't uncommon no matter what you're doing or using. Try a little beeswax and we'll try it again. Okay, so that went a whole lot better. So there you go guys, quick simple little project if you find yourself wanting to cut square holes in wood. Square holes for round pegs, I don't know, whatever you want to do. Don't know what else to say, thanks for watching, God bless, see you on the next one.